thanks for staying with us now as we move into 2021 we know how leadership has impacted lives in 2020 and as the times are changing so fast we need innovative leaders that can lead with the times and seasons upon us now leadership is both a research area and a practical skill encompassing the ability of an individual group or organization to lead influence or guide other individuals teams or an entire organization if anything if they say everything rises and falls on leadership that's according to dr maxwell knowing this is one half understanding the act of leadership and acting uh, and actually um, leading is an entirely different ballgame so our question today is how do we create balanced leaders to preserve our future that's the question let us share what you have to say remember you can join this conversation tweet at us at wish you africa one with the hashtag we show or send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 8038463 so um jennifer i'm going to bring in our guests in like a minute yeah. but i just wanted to hear your thoughts you understand you know what do you think is the biggest challenge of leadership that we have today or that's lacking today um accountability because personally, for me, um, for people who don't even take up the responsibility of, um, of leadership, somehow, somehow in your life, you find out that there's one particular person that is following you, one particular person that probably believes in you. But then that aside, being a leader means you have to be accountable. You're accountable for a whole lot of people. You're accountable for what they do. You're accountable for the goals. You're accountable for visions. Mm -hmm. You're accountable for everything in general. And I think that that is one of the biggest problems that we have as humans. Mm -hmm. Or if we're relating it to Leadership, Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. That accountability is, is, is lacking. Yeah. I think also um, the ability for sincere leadership. Mm. Right? That sincere leader that comes from a genuine place. Not from a place of self but from a place of, you know what, selflessness. Yes. That one is, is a big one that is missing in, in the leadership, in the leadership leadership structure that we have that we currently have in Nigeria. Yeah. All right, so I'll bring in our guest. Kemi Ogunkoya is a renowned leadership development strategist, author, and management consultant. For close to a decade, she has conducted and facilitated high-impact leadership development workshops across Africa, North America, Asia, and she can be prides herself in the ability to help corporate organizations enjoy seamless leadership transitioning and executive onboarding to eliminate deficiencies, which invariably minimize their cost and let them focus on growth. And she's joined us live via Zoom. Thank you so much, Kemi. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Thank you. Finally, <laughs> we are having you. Thank you so much for honoring yeah. our invitation. Yeah. You know, you had a training today on, on, interestingly, on leadership. So how was that training, first of all? It was, it was amazing. You know, it's always amazing um, just getting people to that place of consciousness uh, around the subject of leadership, which I think there's a lot of myths and misconception around, you know. So it's always interesting when you're able to create that sort of transformation. Uh, you're able to help people get to that point of consciousness around what leadership is, helping them demystify the entire concept and also helping them see themselves in the true light of leadership and the responsibilities that they have on their shoulders as leaders. Yeah. It so, was it was great. So so Kemi, um going by the conversation that we had, you know, you have been in, in Nigeria for a while now. And I mean everybody that is in Nigeria knows that we have a leadership problem, right? Have you been able to dissect and, you know, maybe decipher what you think the biggest challenge of leadership, the struggles we, we have in Nigeria? So let me take it from the place of, um, let's start from government. We'll come to organizations, we'll come to family, we'll come to different organizations, school, uh, corporate organizations and all of that. But what's the biggest leadership um, challenge that we have in this climb? So, so um, I, I think Nigeria is quite peculiar, you know, and so is every other um, organization or every other country. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I think that a couple of challenges that um, is quite peculiar to us as a nation. But then I would say that the greatest problem is that of clarity, you know, as a people in terms of what we want to achieve. Hmm. So Yogi Berra said something that 
when you do not know where you're headed, you're going to wind up somewhere else. True. So as a human race, you know, as a people, as a nation, until we get to that point where we're very clear about the kind of nation that we're building, but we're very clear about the kind of people that we are, we will not get to that point where we can truly activate leadership or you know, develop character in our people. So I think it starts from that place of clarity um, as to who are we? What do we want to achieve as the people? What do we want to achieve as a nation? What should our legacy be? What should our driving principles be? So if we are not living from that place of clarity, we're just going to find ourselves in different places and anything you know, we just seem to go. Hmm. So I think clarity is a major problem that we have to um, deal with <laughs> as a people. I'm confused. Can you know why I say I'm confused? <laughs> I mean, we have a long way to go. As a we nation have, in we Nigeria, have a we have a long way to go. Um, so if we're not able to get to that point of clarity as a nation, can we bring it, let us move away from the nation, right? Organizations, you know, they struggle a lot with, when it comes to leadership, especially even some organizations when it comes to maybe transitioning, right? You see that, okay, there's a leadership structure that was there before and there's a change in leadership and a lot of things just, you know, come crumbling down or some cases, I mean, they excel with a new structure, right? So where do you think the process, the, stru the, um, the place of um, putting, um, like a process, a structure in place, maybe like a blueprint, so that for where, where, whenever anybody's coming, the person is able to fit into that blueprint of the organization. And who should be the one to, dis, to, to, to be able to create that blueprint? Because I think even this question I'm asking is also part of what you're saying, clarity of vision. We do not have a blueprint of where we are going to in Nigeria. So that's why anybody, so PDP will come and do their own, APC will come and do their own, MMM will come and do their own like that. So what do you think we can do in terms of who can create that structure? How do we come together to create that blueprint, you know, for better leadership? Okay, awesome. That, that, that's a really fantastic question. So in all time, when we talk about the subject of leadership, we are quick to separate uh, business leadership, political leadership, self-leadership. Uh, but here's the thing, right? There should be a level of consistency, you know, in the expression of our leadership in the different areas of our lives. Yeah. So as an individual, you know, you should have some level of consistency in terms of your values as to who you are as a leader at home. You should have some level of consistency in terms of the expression of your values in the workplace. And also on the national scene, there should be that level of consistency across, you know, the expression of your leadership, the expression of your values. So when there's a great level of disparity between who you are at home as a leader, for example, and who you are as a leader at work, then there's something wrong somewhere. So whether we are looking at it as an organization, whether we are looking at it as a nation, whether you're looking at it on the family scene, there are certain principles that should be the foundation you know, of leadership. So within the organization also, uh, it's not so different. And I would also come from that place of clarity, you know, where an organization is able to say, where are we headed? What kind of people do we need to get us to the, you know, to where we are going to? What is the character or what is the culture that we need to embody within the organization? If we're clear about some of those questions, it will invariably translate into developing the kind of leaders that will be able to fulfill that vision for the organization. So within organizations, for example, you find out that people are you know, just placed in different places within the organization. There's no clear structure around raising people to ensure you know, a sustainable organization. So you find some organizations that are so big on developing leadership competence at the top. And then the middle managers are left, you know, at their own mercy. So eventually they are promoted into top leadership positions 
And because the confidence has not been built, there is a huge lacuna somewhere. So you see that it still brings us back to that place of clarity, where we are very clear as to where we are headed as a nation, mm -hmm. where we are headed as an organization, where we are headed as a family, and then we are looking at what we need to do to start developing competence within those systems and you know those organizations. So, so I, I developed a framework. The framework is called the Dozen Model for Raising Futuristic Leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, and this framework is applicable. Um, you know, in, in in the home front, is applicable for in organizations. Is applicable also in the nation. Mm -hmm. And this framework consists of twelve C's. Okay, and the twelve C's include one: parity, character, competence, commitment connection, confidence, communication, consequence, consistency, critical thinking, consideration, and community. And these are important elements that organizations have to adopt if they are serious about ensuring seamless transitions in their organization and building sustainable leadership. It's also important in nations and families are also not left behind when it comes to raising transformational leaders using the elements of this dozen model. Okay, um, Kemi, talking about um, organizational um, leadership, um, I have two questions, but let me start with the first one. Now, for upcoming leaders, we, you've already talked about um, having clarity and a structure. Now, for upcoming leaders, people who are just starting up, and they're leading probably like a small team, how do they know when they've missed it as a leader? And how can they correct that? Hmm. So, so I think about how do they know when they... How do they know when they've missed it as a leader? And how can they correct it? When okay. it comes to organizational so, leadership. All right. So when your results you know, are not in alignment with your plans, your goals, then you have to go back um, to the drawing board. So there's something we call the event plus response equal to outcome formula. It's um, a framework by Jack Canfield. And it says that events uh, plus your response will produce an outcome. Okay, so E plus R is equal to O. So as a young leader, as a budget leader, as an entrepreneur, uh, wherever you fit in in the grand scheme of things, if you are not achieving the results that you have set out to achieve, if you are not achieving the outcomes that you have set out to achieve, then you have to go back to your response. So, for example, as a leader, you are in your small organization, um, but then you find out that you are not able to get people to perform effectively. You know, you're not able to get them to deliver on their on on their tasks. Right? What do you need to do? So that's that's an outcome. But it's not a favorable outcome. So if you get to that point where the outcome is not favorable, then you want to step back to see what is your response, you know, to this thing. So is it that you lack some leadership competence? You know, is it that you lack the ability to create certain accountability systems in place to ensure that you're able to monitor people effectively? If, for example, the answer is that you have not been able to establish accountability systems, uh, you know, to keep people in check within the organization, then you have to go back to ensure that you consolidate um, on that. So as young leaders, we constantly have to be measuring and monitoring. Whatever you are able to measure, whatever you are able to monitor, you cannot progress on it. So as a leader, you need to understand exactly what you want to achieve. And when those results are not in alignment, then you go back to the drawing table and review your response. What is your response? And that's where you find, you know, exactly what you need to start doing to trace your steps and find your path again as a leader. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> thank you for that response. Um, now, we know that in every um, aspect of leadership, both government, organizational, um, even in the family, there is always going to be change. Like we say, um, change is constant. So how can a leader approach change? All right. Um, so the, the, the truth is, 
our everyday reality now, you know, is tested by our ability to adapt, you know, to change. And, you know, and, uh, so, someone says that change has a noiseless effect, right? So which means that it would not come to you with cymbals and loud banging drums. Uh, but then we are in um, a world that we call a VUCA world, okay? A VUCA world. And the VUCA world presents to us changes at the speed of light. Uh, it's a world that is highly volatile, highly uncertain, very complex and ambiguous. Therefore, to be able to remain, you know, um, that person who is able to thrive as a leader, you also have to be in that place where you are open to new ways of learning, you're open to new ways of doing things, you're open to, you know, new beliefs and new ideas. So as a leader who is on this path of change, who is willing, uh, you know, to try in this VUCA world, this uncertain world, uh, you have to constantly be in that place where you embrace change, okay? There's something we call cognitive readiness, cognitive readiness, and that is your ability to accept change and to prepare for change even before it happens. So you know how we get into um, certain situations like, you know, the, the, the blessings that this season has COVID. brought um, to us, yes. where we have to learn how to use, you know, virtual hangouts, for example. A lot of people before the pandemic had never heard of Zoom, right? But then the pandemic came and then... You know, we realize that Zoom is not just the sound a vehicle makes when it's about to move. We <laughs> learned that it's an application and we have to learn how to use it. So we have to be in that place where we are open to change. First, from that place of appreciating and, you know, embracing that change is our new reality. Hmm. You know, so, so, so I'm talking to a friend a few weeks back who was excited about learning how to use a particular application. And as she told me about the application, I'm like, wow, great, great. But then, do you know there's this other one? And she's like, you know what? Please, please, spare me, not today. You know, I just finished learning how to use this one. But the truth is that for you to survive in this very volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world, we have to learn how to keep, um, you know, um, keeping up with the change. And some of the changes that we have to make as leaders is changing our mindset. So some of us have mindsets that cannot take us into the future. Mm. We have mindsets that are synonymous to the time of amalgamation of Nigeria. <laughs> and it take us into the future. If you want to be on that path of growth, if you want to be on that path where you're constantly developing your skills, you know, because look at leadership, for example. The requirement for leadership in today's world is different from what it used to be in the olden days. Mm -hmm. It's way beyond being able to instruct people and guide people and you know get them to, to move beyond a particular goal or objective. It's about you being flexible in your mind. It's about being, you being able to learn. It's about you being agile. It's about you being cognitively ready mm -hmm. for change at every point in time. It's about you being in a place where you can learn how to use technology that is required to push your life forward, to move your business forward. And that's where you have to be as a leader. So a leader has to be cognitively ready for change. A leader needs the willingness and the ability to deal with change in today's world and be willing to put in exactly what it takes to survive in this business world. So change would happen, press accept change, and then be willing to learn new skills be willing to develop your competence to constantly be on that journey of growth. Okay. They say that yesterday's cutlass will disgrace you on tomorrow's field. So <laughs> you come thinking that you have it all. You're on that journey of growth and you have to constantly keep learning Absolutely. as a leader. Absolutely. I, I was going to talk about um, obsolete structure. So, But we'll take a very short break. When we return, I want us to discuss... Um, this thing you just said, you know, maybe we'll tie it a bit to church leadership. 